Hello fellow rowers, this is Travis back for the training vlog after a bit of hiatus. Still working on getting that computer fixed, but I'm hoping that it's close to go. But wanted to record this to share with you guys. Working out today at the Phillips Exeter Bowhouse where I've been helping out uh, with some coaching this season while one of their lower coaches is on sabbatical. But today for the workout I'm gonna be doing Three minute pieces, I'm gonna be doing another transport workout. Last one I did, I think was about, was it five or six weeks ago now? And I am definitely due for another one. Volume is much higher now than it was back then, so I was only getting 30, 40 minutes for my longer rows back then. Now I'm getting 60 minutes comfortably. So I'm definitely looking to do a little bit more volume with the transport workout today. So it's gonna be three minute pieces, minimum four, maximum six. Five, I think, will give me the volume that I need uh, to balance with the training program, but I wanna leave it open so if I'm feeling really good, I can get that other, that sixth one. The last time I was using a six minute rest period. This time I'm gonna aim for five, but I'll add that extra minute if I need to. Um, the rest for me is really just about making sure that I'm prepped and ready to get another good repetition on uh, the next interval. Stroke rates are going to be in the 20s, so I'm going to start out at a 24 and pretty much bump it up one beat with each uh, with each piece. Drag is going to start, I would say, around 112, and then I may or may not bump that up as I go through the piece as well, but I won't be going higher than probably 116, 118 on that drag factor. So I'm going to get it set up, get that warm up in. Uh, warm up's going to be. 10 minutes, nice and easy U2, um, might be a one minute or two of U1, and then I'll do some builds uh, just to get those uh, the, the legs primed and ready for some anaerobic effort. So that's it, I'll set up, and um, yeah, we'll check in uh, as I go through the workout. All right, so interesting warm up. Um, speed was really there. Um, I wasn't feeling spectacular. I don't feel bad by any means, but you know, I just kind of feel normal. But granted, I haven't been using a monitor for a long time, but the splits are crazy fast for what I would have expected. So I was warming up, started a warm up like 207, finished at around 203, 204, and that was with me really trying to kind of relax and go easy. Did a little bit of U1, went right to like a 154, 155, even saw kind of a 153 in there. Um, just trying to relax that 24 to 26, so who knows, you know, it's kind of, you know, seems a little crazy to be pulling those splits right now, given the amount of volume that I've been doing, but um, I did take the last three days off. Um, yesterday was just a rest day. I was actually not feeling very good um, yesterday. Um, had some kind of pains in the chest um, and have dealt with some acid reflux in the past and I was dealing with it yesterday um, because I ate something that didn't agree with me but the um, weekend uh, was the head of the Charles so I walked around there a lot um, had my three and a half year old there and ended up carrying her half the way so that was kind of a workout in itself um, I can actually still feel it in my arm arms a little tired uh, from carrying her around so much but um, but yeah so you know, three days of no rowing, but I don't think it should be kind of kicking my splits down as much as they are. We'll see what happens on the actual workout, but I'll do a couple builds and then I'll dive right in and so you guys can follow along. Built felt good, 
hitting where I expected. I actually brought the drag down from where I was planning. I brought it down to two or 108 because I was worried about um, just going faster than I wanted to go at the beginning of the workout. I want to give myself room to kind of ramp up at the end without necessarily holding back on my power per stroke. So I'm going to just kind of bring that drag down from to a 108 from that 110, 112 I was planning on starting on just so I can still be good and aggressive on the drive without jacking those splits lower than I want. Um, using this new app by Concept2, this thing is amazing. It's the first time using it. It's the ERG data app. Um, lots of amazing information that it's given me there. Whoop. Uh, about my stroke. Um, also, very important that drive length, top center. It's gonna be super helpful to keep an eye on that um, during my pieces. I haven't been able to use something like that since uh, I was on a row perfect a couple years ago. So I'm excited to check this out, excited for this workout. Everything looks like it's gonna go really well, so hopefully it does, and uh, we'll catch you after each piece. So, good start, 147.5 average. Um, I was about the same speed as I did the last time I did this workout, which is good, that's where I was kind of aiming for, um, but uh, way easier than it was last then. I was really kind of controlled effort there. Um, way easier in order ter terms of, you know, I wasn't feeling lactate. I still feel kind of this kind of general muscular fatigue, which is kind of weird considering how, uh, how good my splits seem to be. Rate was a little higher than I wanted, hitting around 25 plus or minus one every once in a while, but a beat higher than I wanted, no big deal. Uh, next piece, 
we'll just try to kind of keep it there and maybe push it a little into a 26 for the last minute. So um, drive length using that uh, Erg Data app, uh, really steady, 136 centimeters, plus or minus three. So I was seeing 139, 133 every once in a while. Um, consistent between those two, so maybe it goes in three centimeter increments, but um, consistent there even when I was kind of near the end of the piece. So we'll see how that holds up through the rest of the workout today. Um, got at least three more pieces, hopefully four, maybe five. So back to the warm down. Um, after I do finish each interval, I'm really careful to stay on that, that erg and row it out for at least a minute. Um, I don't wanna go cold turkey from high pressure to up and walking around doing nothing, all right? So that extra kind of bit of rowing helps. Um, if I wasn't talking to you guys, I'd probably be rowing on a light paddle for that entire five minutes uh, with the exception of water whenever I needed. So that's it. Interval two, goal is 25 for the first half, 26 for the second half on stroke rate. Uh, split, staying in that low 147 range, right? Maybe just try to bring a couple tenths of a second off of the average. <sighs> Second piece down, still doing good. Definitely working, but definitely not in that place where I'm just like, oh, I'd rather be somewhere else. Um, split was 146.6. Short grade 25, 26. Um, maybe 26 a little longer than I wanted, but uh, still hitting that in that range. Next piece will be should be nice and steady at that 26. And uh, looking to just get 
a little bit faster, all right? So really kind of looking at that 146 split for most of that piece and um, good to go from there. Stroke length, still holding steady. 136, 139 centimeters. Definitely convinced that it only measures in three centimeter increases um, or decreases, but uh, that's a quirk of the software. But that's it. Got another minute or so of rest and uh, back into the next piece. Three down, 145.6 had a 26. Still going faster than I'd like to be going on this, um, but we'll see if it holds up. It's hard for me to kind of relax it down without losing my connection and acceleration. So not the worst thing in the world. I did bump up the drag before the second piece to 110. So that'll definitely account for a little bit of increase in speed, keeping the stroke rate and the acceleration dynamic the same but it is what it is i will keep it at 110 just bump it up the stroke rate this time so i'll start about a 26 finish around 27 for the second half that should bring me just a touchdown on my split and uh try and get a little bit faster each time by bumping up that stroke rate all right back into it
145.1. That one was definitely hard. The first minute actually felt super easy. Got really hard in the second minute. Last minute was, you know, counting strokes, trying to get to that finish line. Uh, stroke rate 27. Saw a little bit of 28 um, in there, but uh, pretty much right in target for what I want to be. Last one. This one's gonna hurt. Done. Five pieces. Last one. 143.9. 29.30 for short rate. Mostly 30 for the last two, a little more than two minutes. That was hard. So, you know, everybody has different demons that they face on their workouts. And part of what reaching high level involves is just figuring out how to battle your own personal demons, but everybody has them. Don't think that just because higher level rowers have achieved so much that they don't have that voice in their head saying, you don't want to do this, anything but this. Um, for me, yeah, entire last two minutes, just, oh, I don't want to do this. You can stop. You can cut the video so people won't know. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, um, four is enough. You could have stopped at four you know, all those voices. And for me, it was just focusing on taking good strokes and counting to 10 over and over again. Count to 10, 
six times, seven times, however many it was when things started to get really hard. And it's just break it down one bit at a time. Whatever you need to do to get through that effort. Um, so for me, it's counting and focus on a good connection acceleration. And if I'm accelerating well at any given stroke rate, if I'm rowing well, then the power will result because power is a product of good rowing technique. So I focus on the application and trust that the power is gonna be there if I'm accelerating, connecting well at the stroke rate I need to be. And then it's just a matter of convincing myself to just keep attacking, keep going, get to that finish line. Um, certainly it's easier when you got teammates around you or if you're on the water and you're in a competitive situation, but uh, we don't always have that, especially as matches rowers on your own. So find your strategy. Don't think you're the only one that struggles with it. We all do, but you gotta find the tricks that help you get through the hard times mentally. But for me, great workout. Had no idea, no expectation that I'd be pulling splits like that. So yay on those 60 minute steady states, getting that fitness and that oxygen utilization to a point where I could produce that power with ease. But I'm gonna cut in, do as much active recovery as I can before the teams get here that I have to coach later. Ideally 20 minutes, 10 minutes absolute minimum. And the more you can get uh, after 10 minutes, the more lactic acid you're gonna flush from your system so that you're gonna be fresh for the next day's training. So that's it. Thanks for following along that ERG data software. Oh, yeah. oh where is it? Oh, this stuff is gold. Great innovation. I can't believe it took me this long to figure out it was out there. Um, probably because I don't have a monitor on my machine, but connects wirelessly to your PM5. You can connect it with a wire to your PM3 or PM4. Amazing data, basically mimics what I have on my monitor. Um, I actually had it set up so my monitor showed my power curve today, and then I got, I could get the information I needed from this, that that power curve obscured. But uh, biggest, biggest things for me, it's that drag factor. That's amazing for the way I like to approach my training. Using that drag factor like I would use gears on a bike. It's the reason I use the PM2 monitor on my Concept 2 Model C is because you can display the drag factor at all times while you're on. Well now with this software, you can do that here as well. So I can change my drag as I go without having to go back to that boot screen and go into display drag factor. So yay, great job Concept2. Super props for including that in this, in this application. Uh, swipe for that next screen. You get a lot more data points. For me, key data point is that stroke length. It measures in meters. I like to talk to it about in centimeters. So it was saying 1.36, 1.39 for my pieces today, uh, which was 136, 139 centimeters. Um, but super helpful for that. That'll be super helpful for less experienced athletes to watch and make sure that you're maintaining stroke length when you're getting tired. So amazing function there. Um, the others, peak force, average force, good comparison. I wasn't paying attention to them today because I'm not super familiar with them, having not used them for years since I had an RP3 to work with. But drag factor, stroke length, very important measurements. Awesome that we have this now with this ErgDid app. So Prop C2, always coming out with great materials. Definitely the industry leader for Concept2 monitors. You guys just reduced some of the reasons why somebody would buy an RP3 over the C2. So props to you staying competitive in the market. But um, I'm happy with that, happy with the workout. Hope that helped you guys as I kind of talk to you guys through my thought process through it and uh, hop on, I'll get some active recovery. We'll be back on the next video. Peace. Uh.